welcome back to my youtube channel if you're new here my name is ifoma i'm a fashion designer and a pattern dress maker so guys on today's tutorial we're going to be making this root skirt root <laughs> yeah root root skirt so basically i guess why it's called root skirt because of the whole effect going around the gathering effect which you can achieve with an elastic or with a rope yep and basically that's it so if you want to see how this went down just stay tuned to the end of this video don't forget to give this video a thumbs up comment share you know do all of those cute sweetheart youtube shit for me and of course subscribe <laughs> So here are the things we're going to be using for this video or this tutorial and that fabric is called the Duchess fabric and I'm using one yard. I love it guys. So keeping that aside, opening up our pattern paper. If you don't know how we achieve this pattern, um, the link is going to be in my description box below and uh, you should just check that out because we're not going to be drafting that pattern again. All we did is just basically trace it out on another pattern paper. I traced out the front and the back. The front, I had to cut it on fold because we're going to be, you know, <laughs> doing some slashing. Yeah. As remember I said we cut our front pattern on fold this is what it means by cutting it on fold and now we're going to take quarter of our measurements like our waist measurements here and get half of quarter of our waist measurements and we're going to be squaring that out with ruler I was going that down yeah squaring that down with a ruler So once that's done, you're going to open up your pattern paper and we're slashing. First of all, we're going to label our pattern CF1 and CF2 before going in with our scissors to cut that part out. Remember guys, we added sewing allowance to the side of this pattern. I don't know if you can see it, it's a one inch sewing allowance. so guys i had to use this like cute um what would i call them sculptures what do i call them i don't know i had to use them to like hold the fabric down because this fabric this fabric <laughs> oh even after pinning them guys this fabric was still was still was still moving like how dare you i guess the weight of the um the house the little houses wasn't much so i pinned that down just so we cut off cf1 i went into you know add 0 0.5 inches which is going to be like our sewing allowance and it will also come handy to make our you know strap i didn't add any um, inches to the other side because um we already did to the pattern I don't know if you guys can see this but this fabric is moving it is moving it's annoying am i being too loud but anyways we're just going to pin that down and continue with our uh, cotton i guess i didn't use like much weight of um stuff to hold it down So now, if you notice, our line has changed transition now. Huh? <laughs> but I'm just using my eye to you know, navigate the whole, th whole stuff to cut. I'm sure you guys get what I'm saying. Yeah, we've cut that first pattern on fabric out. And moving forward. So now, I added... <laughs> if you notice guys 
I brought some candles, <laughs> some candles to use to you know weigh it down. Like I'm talking about the fabric on the pattern. So we have some more, <laughs> some more shit. You know, am I using this word shit? I'm still saying it. We still have some more um weights on the fabric and on the pattern, so the fabric doesn't slip off. I'm basically going to, going to cut that out and i just cut added if you if you notice guys i'm cutting on 0 0.5 inches 0 0.5 inches that's what i left out and that's what we're going to use to attach the two parts now to the back pattern cutting yeah we're not going to be adding anything because we already added to our pattern same routine pinning it down before cutting yep that is done we've gotten all our pieces front and back and keep that aside now we're going to be cutting something which you're going to see be seeing later on it's going to be like a facing from the top line i measured two inches yeah two inches from the top line connecting that with the ruler and the front part with a curve So just going to be cutting the back pattern also yeah so I went ahead also to cut out the back that which is not going to be needed and tape that down just basically taping that down and now we're going to be cutting our side allowance sizing my lungs and we're going to be taping that together also so now we folded our fabric in two and we're just going to be pinning that down pinning our pattern down so note guys, the center front is still on fold, still on fold. So the only joining is going to be at the back zip. Okay, so we're just basically going to be pinning that down also so we could cut out and we're not going to be adding any allowance. We're just going to be cutting out the exact piece.
I went over to a sewing machine, I was sewing on one inches, which was our zip allowance. And if you notice, I transferred my darts. So make sure you transfer your darts to your garments or your fabric. So now I'm just pinning down um, all that. So it's going to be easy for me to you know, stitch that down. So pin and pin and stitch. So now for our zip, I went in to, you know, attach our zip and pin and do a lot of pinning. Just pin that down. So I like to do pinning before I stitch. That way it's easier and it's less stressful. basically what we're going to be doing we're going to be joining our cf1 to our cb1 that's our center front with our um, back piece after we've sewn down our zip and our dart and all of that so i'm sewing on one inch i know you guys are going to notice some very very rough Cutting. This is because my scissors was blunt when I was cutting this so it didn't really cut out the fabric real smooth But I was going to weave that out so it didn't matter Carry my tabletop weaving machine But I know you're just going to be seeing some piece or some parts of the machine This is because I didn't set my camera properly while I was weaving and I don't know if I should call that ignorance or what, but yeah, it's all good. The weaving machine I'm using is a single 14SH754 modem, and it's a four threaded machine. But right here and right now, I was using a tree, using tree threads, and something terrible happened to me. Like something terrible, guys. Hmm. Just stay tuned.
So while I was weaving, something terrible happened to me. Remember I said that? My weaving machine made a hole on this dress. As it was my fault because I didn't check the thing when I was weaving. I was just weaving and a little piece of that place got in. And because my weaving machine has a cutter and a blade, it just weaved and cut that out. This is what the weaving, ma weaving machine weaved and that's what the weaving is like. So I lose that place just so I could see if I could adjust it. And at the end of the day, that's not really the sad part. My weaving machine is faulty now. Like it's broken. So I have to like fix that thing. So what I'm doing now is at the end of the day I patched back. Like I patched it. I'm pinning the center front one to the center front two and I'm just going to be sewing that down at 0 0.5 inches and just so basically so so let me continue my story of how that thing broke like now I have to like get it shipped from Amazon to Nigeria and it's been terrible because the um shipping date or the time frame for it to be here in nigeria that i could get it is so far and i have a lot of work to do with it well back to what we're doing um i went in on the bottom hem line i went in with one inches so i'm folding that in that'll be our hemming so the one inches is our hemming allowance i was supposed to weave that bottom line but then my weaving machine it doesn't weave anymore guys <laughs> so sad it's so sad and it's because i don't know if i should say because of my my well let's not talk about it anymore let's just focus on this video but i feel sad guys i feel so sad i have to spend money i don't have just to replace that thing and now we're just going to be stitching the last parts and once that's done we're going to open our cf and we're going to be stitching if you notice guys i left like about 0 0.25 inches that's what we're going to be passing our strands or let me call it our rope and then we're going to do the same on the other side so on 0 0.25 remember our the allowance we left was 0 0.5 inches so i'm just sewing this is big depends this also depends on the width of your rope the width of my rope is like a, a bit tiny so this would just fit perfectly for it yours can be bigger and you might have to leave about 0.75 inches allowance on that place and then you sew on 0.5 i don't know if that makes any sense but this is what it looks like after sewing top stitching moving forward we're going to be joining the two sides together so basically our skirt is 80% complete Now here's what the rope I'm using looks like and it's a very thin rope as you can see and I'm just using my hairpin to pass that in. It's just a bobby pin for hair 
but it's just a hack I invented. <laughs> I'm passing that in. So once we're done with that, what we're going to be doing is teaching the went over to our sewing machine and we're going to be stitching our rope down on the top line, not on the bottom line, top line guys. And once you're done with that, just cut that out or any excess thing you don't need, thread or the rope, anything. Cut it out. So on that place we're just going to be notching that and notching that so we're notching our side so it's easy to you know place that down and know where our sides are so we're going to be placing right side facing each other and pinning that down so first of all I went over to pin our sides that's the notches and then the back pin that in place so we're sewing on 0 0.5 inches just basically just gonna keep sewing and sewing and so enjoy edge you're just going to be flipping that like so and sewing that down also going to do the same thing on the other side so make sure you don't sew on your zip you have to be careful not to sew on your zip guys and once that's done, I'm going to be turning that inside out and also going to be giving it a good press. You could also use your hemming gum. Yeah, that's what it looks like. So this is what the actual color of the outfit looks like. Um, I guess my camera is making it look um, a bit washed but here this is what it looks like this is what the finished look looks like so guys if you like this video give this video a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe thank you for watching